another crisis, I would imagine, was this bribery case. And I read, was reading Refresh some papers. my memory. Um, some man at one of the camps in Austria had accepted uh, 3,000 guilders or something from some well, A immigrants. man was an official in the yeah. camp? Yeah, and, uh, and I think he was an IRO official. He was a, some kind of official. Surprised. And there was a lot of correspondence. There were six people who apparently paid him, and there was a, they were taking depositions. And in the I end, I think know. in the end, most of the people got to camp, but they were also the government was investigating, getting oh, a little bit hot. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. It was a corrupt environment. Listen, there's one man whom I know now. He's a very rich man in Montreal. He's still involved. He brought $25,000 worth of uh, lit, lit goods equipment, the latest that he got somewhere in Germany in those terrible days. People who were in Germany in those days and everything collapsed, helped themselves to a lot of things, including our own, uh, you know, that was the environment. Yeah. I'm not passing judgment on anybody who <laughs> was linked to that particular year and the collapse of the German Reich. And corruption was a way of life. That's how you survived. They had, they had a good education in Eastern Europe on that. Either. Even when they could do things legally under the law, they would resort to corruption, you know, because they didn't trust that. They didn't believe that this can be done. I've had many cases. I always said, you know, the, the example that was given me, you know, the Jew who was picking his ears. So usually the peer, they pick it with, with, with the finger of your left hand, you pick your left ear. Was, no, but those Jews were always picking like that, you know. <laughs> what they could do, they would never do le things legally or in a straight walk forward manner, what they could do legally. And I remember the letters, and I remember my interventions with it. I had to go to the ministers with people. People who could have uh, perjury, you know, is a crime, and a, a very serious crime under Canadian law and, uh, oh, and, uh, and the laws very which are based on, uh, on British common law. Perjury, very serious crime. And, uh, we, the people here began applying for their sons and relatives and daughters. Well, the people were examined by the officials, by immigration officials. And they were asked to, you know, they're supposed to, they're supposed to exclude people acting in the Communist Party, Nazis, and so on. So, a number of the, those who escaped into the Soviet Union, they were asked uh, an understandard question, were you ever a member of the Communist Party or served in the, in the Russian army, you know, the USSR? And they would say, oh, no, no, never. But some of them were for, even though they were Polish, legally Polish citizens, were forced to uh, into the Soviet army. And if they would have just said very plainly, yes, I served in the Soviet Army, but I was forced into it illegally, would it be no problem? No, but they would, wouldn't say that. So a number of them were rejected. I remember a father separated from, a parent separated from their only children left. <laughs> and I went to see uh, Harris, who was then the Minister of Immigration. M.J. Caldwell took me to see him. Presented the case, they, oh, no. they ruled against, they upheld the decision of the immigration. Perjury was one of, the, uh, one of the problems. But those people got the United States, that's very interesting. But uh, the United States government was, was in the softer on this issue. Well, was the Canadian government. I have no doubt that there were a lot of scandals, you know, a lot of you know, cases. And, uh, and there's, you know, you also have to understand the environment of, which prevails in emig emigra emigrant circles. Uh, you know, a lot of old scores settled, a lot of jealousies, and denunciation is a way of life. 
It would denounce to the authorities what local and Canadian immigration authorities, people at the drop of the, of the pit, you know, uh, communist, fascist, it was cheap. And this, this is a, a way of life, you know, people who were born here and they listen to their parents, you get the impression that uh, the people in the old countries, they're all rabbis, wonderful, devout people. Many of them were horse thieves and, and, <laughs> and sluggers and, and uh, informers and whatnot. That, that poverty of Eastern Europe has produced all sorts of things. So I'm not surprised, I wasn't surprised, particularly when you dealt with immigrants. 